Hi everyone, welcome back to SG Know How channel. Welcome to From Pixels to Prediction. In this video, we shall unravel the pivotal elements driving neural network power, activation functions and the pooling layer. We will also discover the secrets behind these crucial components shaping the way our networks learn and predict. Now let us see the role of activation function in the neural network. The activation function helps us to determine the output of neural network. Consider an artificial neural network shown in figure here where we can see the role of activation function in the neural networks. There are three inputs x0, x1 and x2 multiplied by the corresponding weights w0, w1, w2. The cell body here performs the weighted sum of the inputs plus the bias term. The activation function is applied on this sum of weighted inputs plus the bias and uh, the role of the activation function is to produce an output. Based on the activation function, the output is obtained here. So we have seen what an activation function does in a neural network. The activation function determines the output. So what are the properties to be satisfied by activation function? Uh, an activation function should have a derivative of the differential that is change in y axis with respect to change in x axis. It is also known as slope. The second property is that it should be a monotonic function, a function which is either entirely non-increasing or non-decreasing. The choice of activation function in deep neural network has a significant impact on the training dynamics and task performance. So an activation function should satisfy two properties. One is that it should have a derivative or a differential and the second is that it should be a monotonic function. Let us see some of the common activation functions and the most commonly used one is a sigmoid function given by sigma of x is equal to 1 by 1 plus e raised to the power minus x. Now the figure shows sigmoid function and whose value ranges from 0 to 1. So the features of sigmoid functions are the output will always range between 0 to 1 and it is of a S-shaped form. It is both monotonic and differential. The derivative of the sigmoid function will lie between 0 and 0.25. The function is differentiable as the slope of the sigmoid curve at any two points can be found. The function is monotonic but the function's derivative is not. So what are the disadvantages of sigmoid function? The derivative of sigmoid function suffers vanishing gradient problem. Looking at the function plot, when inputs become small or large, the function saturates at 0 or 1 with a derivative extremely close to 0. Thus, we can say that it has almost no gradient to propagate back through the network. It is also computationally expensive. The next most commonly used activation function is the hyperbolic tan function which is also called tan h. The function is given by e power x minus e power minus x divided by e power x plus e power minus x. Figure shows the graphical representation of tan h and its derivative. From the figure we can see that the value of tan h ranges from minus 1 to plus 1. So tan h is 0 centered with the range minus 1 to plus 1. The function is differentiable same as sigmoid and it is also monotonic which is similar to a sigmoid characteristic. 
the only difference between tan h and sigmoid is that the value of sigmoid ranges from 0 to 1 while the hyperbolic tangent function ranges from minus 1 to plus 1. The disadvantage is similar to that of uh, a sigmoid function. The derivative of tan h function also suffers from vanishing gradient problem and it is also computationally expensive. The third activation function that we are going to see is rectified linear unit in short given as RELU. The ReLU function is given by maximum of 0 and x. If the input is negative, the function returns 0 but for any positive input, it returns the value back. Figure shows the ReLU activation function and its derivative. The advantage of ReLU function is that it is computationally efficient. The function is very fast to compute when compared to sigmoid and hyperbolic tangent function as it does not involve any exponent calculation. It converges very fast and also solves the gradient saturation problem if the input is positive. The drawback of rectified linear unit ReLU function is that it suffers from vanishing gradient problem for negative input. To overcome this we have leaky ReLU which is given by a into x for x less than 0 and equal to x for x greater than 0 where x is the input here and a is a constant. The graphical representation of leaky ReLU and its derivative is shown in figure. So here the hyperparameter A defines how much the function leaks. It is the slope of the function for x less than 0 and is typically set to 0 0.01. The small slope ensures that leaky ReLU never dies. So the vanishing gradient problem is not encountered for negative inputs here. The next commonly used activation function is the softmax function which is mostly used in the output layer. The softmax function calculates the probability distribution of the event over n different events. It is given by sigma of z for the jth event is e power zj divided by summation i varying from 1 to n e power zj for j varying from 1 to n. The softmax can be described as a combination of multiple sigmoid function. For example, consider there are four classes a, b, c, d and when a test input is given, we have to identify or the network has to predict to which class this input belongs to, whether it is a or b or c or d. Let the output from the four neurons in the output layer be 2.5, 5.7, 1.6 and 4.3 and Based on the softmax function, the output after applying softmax will be 0 0.26, 0 0.14, 0 0.41 and 0 0.19. Now from the output after applying the softmax, it can be understood like the probability 0.41 is the highest among the four which corresponds to class C. So by seeing the probability value, it can be inferred that the data belongs to class C. So having seen what activation functions are and the different activation functions, next let us see the significance of pooling layer and its types. Pooling layers are used to reduce the dimensions of the feature maps. Thus, it reduces the number of parameters to learn and the amount of computation performed in the network. The pooling layer summarizes the features present in a region of the feature map generated by a convolution layer. 
This makes the model more robust to variations in the position of the features in the input image. There are two types of pooling. One is max pooling and another one is average pooling. To illustrate the working of max pooling, consider a simple image of size 4 cross 4. The filter size is 2 cross 2 and the pooling filter is applied on the image. Initially, it takes the position shown by the green shaded region. After a stride of 2, the filter takes the yellow shaded position. Out of the 4 pixels in the green shaded region, the maximum value is 7 and that is retained after pooling. Similarly, in the yellow shaded region, the maximum value is 5 that is retained in the pixel in the pooling layer. So, Similarly, for the remaining two filter positions, we have 5 and 7. While in average pooling, the average of all the pixel elements covered by the filter is obtained after pooling operation. And hence, in average pooling, we obtain 3.5. 3.5, 3 and 3.5 as the pooling output. So, in conclusion, let's summarize what we have seen in this video. We explored the essence of various activation functions like sigmoid, hyperbolic tangent function, rectified linear unit, and leaky relu. We uncover their strengths, weaknesses and their impact on neural network training. We delved into the computational advantages of ReLU and mitigated limitations with leaky ReLU ensuring neurons stay active. We also explored the application of softmax function in object or image classification using probability distribution. We finally saw about pooling layer and its types, namely max pooling and average pooling, showcasing their significance in reducing feature map dimensions, enhancing model robustness. In our next video, we will see about classical neural networks and its characteristics. Thank you for watching.